Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm going to go do my early morning watering. Wanted to just touch base today and talk a few minutes about hummingbirds. And the hummingbirds have been in crisis. It was a horrible day yesterday. The thermometer was hitting between 112 and 115. It was so incredibly hot, it was unbelievable. It was an all day ordeal of me sitting in the kitchen and running constantly and refilling hummingbird feeders. The problem was they have no place to cool off and that you can't catch them and box them up and do anything with them. All you can do is do the best you can do. And that's basically what I did. It is hot. I'll let you know, I'm wearing a tube top and it is hot. Uh, we're going to be about 100 today, maybe a little less. And the reason we may be a little less is the sky is red with smoke right now. We are not near any fires, but with the wind shift, it's bringing the smoke in here and ash. There's ash raining everywhere. The plants have got this little fine ash. The camera won't pick it up. I tried it and it's so fine that you can't see it falling. But we have fine ash falling and it's probably going to start building on my hat. I just came out here because I'm going to water my chairs and I'm going to water the driveway down there and get all that done. And then I uh, probably will be in the house all day as this maybe burns off because we have a combination of smoke and maybe, I mean, it, it could be a little bit of a marine layer. The thing is, I'm doing what I can to see if I can keep my local hummingbirds alive. I know we'll have a lot of migrating hummingbirds soon. They'll be coming from up north down here and they'll live here, but we have thousands here living here and these are locals. I'll show you what I did because really I was at a loss. I've never in all my years living in Southern California seen it this hot except in Palm Springs. And I remember being there at 118 degrees, but this was even at times it was hotter, it felt hotter and the animals are not used to it. So they don't even know what, them, you know, what to do themselves. I started with taking small containers and filling them with ice because I didn't have them pre-frozen. And I was taking these containers and I was putting them in my hummingbird feeders. Now granted, at 112 degrees, it isn't gonna stay cool, but the air was so hot. It was unbelievable how fast the hummingbird feeders would get hot and the birds were desperate. They were hanging all over. We hung more feeders around in the shade, but they didn't want it. They're creatures of habit and they have areas they like to feed in. You, know, you may put a feeder somewhere and you don't know why they're not coming. It may be someplace they just simply don't want to feed. So you have to move a feeder around and they really like the windows. They really like hugging the house. I don't know why, but that's what they like. And then when you tend to put a feeder in a garden, you might have one or two birds protect that feeder and not let other birds come feed. So you have to spread feeders. I mean, we've got dozens of feeders everywhere. The feeders that they gen generally absolutely love are the ones, as you've seen on my kitchen window, where they've nested. So this was just like musical chairs all day, going through and pulling them in. I took containers with ice and I would drop the containers. They were sealed. I was dropping those into the hummingbird feeders. And from there, it would keep it cool for maybe an hour, if that. As soon as I felt it and Gary felt a couple and said, boy, these are hot, we would bring them in and I would clean them out because even though they were just cleaned, I would still clean them because with the heat, I don't know if it's going to grow bacteria that I haven't seen yet. Wash them out and put them back. And I was trying to get smaller amounts knowing they weren't going to feed as much. So this was all day, all day. Uh, the birds would come in, their mouths were open. They couldn't, it was like they were panting like a dog. I mean, this is how they cooled themselves down, but they looked really bad. I am sure, I am absolutely sure that a lot of them did perish yesterday. I will say I was happy to see hundreds and hundreds in the window this morning come in to feed as it's still cool. There's a feeder behind me as well. And there's one right here buzzing above my head, but all the feeders right now are full and I'll be starting to do that again. The other thing I have done now as well, and you could do it if you're in an area where it's really hot and you're feeding a lot of birds, you know, like maybe me, uh, freeze some of the formula. I filled ice cube trays 
and not trays, individual ice cube containers. And I froze some of the food that I made last night. And this way I'm gonna be rotating frozen food. Remember, they don't want it cold. They want it room temperature, but I'll put some frozen food in there along with fresh hummingbird nectar I make in there. To try to keep the hummingbird feeders cool during over 100 degree weather, you will need usually a wide mouth feeder. But what you could do is there was multiple things you can do. In a pinch, I added in ice in here, closed this, and I dropped them in here and filled them with nectar. You could also just take containers. This is now frozen. Do the same thing. You could drop it in here and fill this up and put it together. The other thing you could do, which I also did, was you could take a simple small Ziploc bag with some plain ice, drop them in there. Did this all day yesterday too. Make sure it's closed. And then you can put this inside the feeder and then fill it with maybe part way up with hummingbird nectar that you made and then close it up. That works the same way. And lastly, the thing that I'm doing now, freezing some of the hummingbird nectar. Very simple. This is hummingbird nectar. This goes in here. I then just fill it up. And that's all there is to it. Close it up, put it outside, and now they'll have nice, cool food until it melts. And then I'll watch it. And if we're only at 100 today, it won't be that bad. Actually, you would think, gee, 100 bad. It's not that bad at 100. But when you're 112, 115, and even hotter, it heats up so fast because there's absolutely no way to cool it down. You can't mist it. Everything's evaporating. Everything is so hot. So there's nothing you can do. And if it gets diluted, they won't drink it. I don't change the formula at all. It's a quarter of a cup of sugar to one cup of water. Some people said that they dilute it a little bit in the summer because what they're trying to do is get more water in them. The birds here know where there's water. I, the water is not a problem. We have fountains everywhere. We kept freshening that up, and so that we kept cool. What they need is food, and with it that hot, a lot of flowers fell off. Uh, you know, a lot of the flowers, I saw it on the news, people lost, like, they had floral companies, and they had flowers growing. They lost all their flowers. It just shriveled up at 115 degrees. So flowers were a problem. I've seen the hummingbirds around the eaves looking for insects because they still need insects. So food isn't really, when it comes to protein, a big problem, but flowers could be a big problem. So you want to keep, or I feel, you want to keep the recipe, the nectar, at this, the right amount. Yesterday in many areas was record-breaking, hotter than it's ever been since they started to record the temperatures. So hopefully we're out of that. But freezing some formula, adding in a little bit, you don't want to make it ice cold. They are not going to drink it. You don't want that. But you want to add in some ice cubes from the nectar if you're in an area and then change it. You may have to change it two or three times a day. I changed it every, it was almost every hour in the hour. I was bringing it in, throwing the formula down the sink, washing everything out and putting in new and not filling the feeders because they weren't going to empty them. Usually I fill a hummingbird feeder and it's gone in a matter of a few hours, but they, they, couldn't, they couldn't feed like that yesterday. And so I would just take them in and change them. And we'll probably be doing that today. I'm going to go water my garden. Uh, keep the formula as is. That's what I would say. Don't add any vitamins or anything to it. They know what they're doing. Let them do what they have to. If you can, add in bird baths because that's important. They like some place that's very uh, shallow and they can land and splash and scrub. You know a lot of my mine are domed. I'm making some that are domed so they can lay on it and scrub their beak if they get sticky from pollen and nectar and different things. Um, the other thing is sprinklers. They love sprinklers. They will fly through the sprinklers and I've got footage of that it's absolutely amazing just a hose they they like there's different ways they like to bathe there is flying 
there is kind of just landing and splashing and then there's an actual scrubbing and bathing. So they need to be able to stand. And remember they got short little legs so they're not gonna go swimming in anything deeper than probably a half an inch. So they're not gonna really go into anything unless it's very shallow. So you wanna give them a place that is shallow that they feel safe on so they can land and splash. But like I said, you can put on sprinklers, you can have something that's spraying and they will just fly through. They do that all the time. And that will help keep them cool. And then again, formula. Formula is very, very important to them because, well, they need food and food is, food is absolutely crucial for them because if they don't get enough food in one day, they will perish. So I'm gonna make sure this feeder behind me has got food in it, and if it's warm, I will change it. If not, I'll come back later and change it. This particular feeder belongs to just a couple birds. It's actually one bird that sleeps on that feeder back there. And then of course the ones I've got around the house, it's a community feed, uh, feeding station. You know, they, they all feed and they're all happy, and it's funny how birds are and what they decide and how they decide they're gonna feed. So that's what was going on with the hummingbirds. And then pretty soon we're gonna have the migrators coming in. The ones that are migrating, they're gonna be here and then we'll have thousands upon thousands. But what did I buy yesterday? Hundred, I had a hundred pounds of sugar delivered yesterday and I'll probably have more because I wanna make sure I've got enough for the winter because I don't know what's gonna be this winter. I don't know if it'll be easy to get sugar or hard. There's been, sometimes it's hard, they don't have it and then sometimes they've got it. So I've got to be well prepared. And sugar, keep in mind, if you find a good sale and you're feeding a lot of hummingbirds, sugar will last for years and years. That is one thing that doesn't spoil. So don't worry about that. Just keep it in a nice, cool, dry place and it will last for years. Well, I'm gonna get back to work here. And the moringa flowers I can see on the tree over there did quite well. The hummingbirds absolutely love their moringa. I saw bumblebees in them and they did not get bothered by the heat, but then that's a heat-loving plant. So if you've got heat-loving plants, think of the desert, there's beautiful things that bloom in the desert, then they don't have a problem with the heat. But some flowers, they're, you know, they're not originally from there and then they'll lose their flowers and that's where the hummingbirds need us to help them survive. So I'm gonna get back to watering some of my garden before the sun comes up too much. It is coming up and it's very red because the sky is covered in smoke. Bad air quality, very bad air quality today because of all the ash that keeps falling. And it's probably bad for us, which means it's bad for the animals too. So I wanna keep them happy and get the feeders all full. And this will be a circus today, probably pulling all those things down and changing it all day. But you know what? If I can keep these guys alive and happy, that makes me feel good. And that's what I'm here to do. So with that, have a wonderful day. We're fine right now. We're not near any fires. There are fires up in the hills, but they're not in this area. And you know, I pray for everybody. I hope everybody gets through this okay. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.